How's it going, everybody? Hope you all are doing well. So let's push in to the next video in building a Minuteman kit series. We're going to be discussing comms or communications. So this is a very serious and often overlooked topic when trying to be effective in you know, maneuvering people, let's say neighborhood protection plan or neighbors against you know, a opposition or something. So they normally talk about shoot, move, and communicate. Communication is very key. So first off, as you can see here, we have radios, which that's normally what people think. When you say comms, they immediately think, okay, radios, that's programming them, stuff like that. There's a lot of other things, non-electronic, that are utilized and have been utilized for a very, very long time that are effective. And that is exactly what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the radios a little in a little bit. We're going to do the alternatives up front first. Like I said, originally I had radios. Let's talk about something else. So first up is verbal communication. We're literally doing it right now. Works, but it starts to degrade when you're involved in, say, using firearms or other loud noises around you. When there's a lot of commotion or things occurring, it starts to break down and gets more difficult to hear. The limitations are normally distance because you can only project your voice for so long at a certain distance. Now, how we normally have been able to kind of move around or maneuver around that being an issue is literally using a runner. So if you have a defensive force, kind of like what we're talking about in this whole neighborhood protection plan, and you need to defend your home and your family against a possible opposition like rioting, looting, stuff like that, you may need and you will need, let's say, to get communication from the front line back to your command and control point, which we'll discuss in future videos, all that kind of stuff, relay accurate and quick information. So runners are awesome because you can tell them to go from point A to point B back to point A with new information. Hey, relay it. It works. Problem is runners get tired. They get injured. They can get captured. They can be killed, unfortunately. And that will be a very quick breakdown in communication unless you have several other people in line ready to do that. But if you're actively engaging a force, do you want to take one of your members and say, hey, I need your gun in the fight, but can you go relay this information? Maybe that's a call you're willing to make, but sometimes you may want more people up front in the line defending. Granted, issues occur. Talking and code words. We already discussed talking and runners. Code words also work. Really quick something that you can yell out and someone can remember and be like, oh, I know what that means. That means they need more ammo. Instead of yelling, hey, I need more ammo. If you just yell out some random, you know, word, okay, that person, that's what he needs or that group of people. So next, going from verbal to visual. So what visual aspects are available to you that have worked? First off is light and flashlights being one of them. I have several different out here. So normally we're used to white light and you can honestly do a, you know, a code if you want, very simple code. If you see three flashes, that means this. If you see two flashes, that means this. It is reasonably easy to work like that if you have standard operating procedures or SOPs and you establish that with your neighborhood or your group that you're gonna be working with. Colors also work as well. Red, green, blue, purple, whatever you have available to you, you doing maybe a code of some sort will also allow them, your CCP or whatever, to know what you need or what's happening. With that comes issues. You normally have day and you have night. Flashlights work at night very well, of course. They degrade during the day, harder to see. And flashlights can also give your position away to your opposition or your enemy force. You may not want to let them know. That's why we discuss code words. Okay, so we do this. 
They may not know what that means, but they know, hey, there's a flashlight and there's some kind of communication happening between that thing 300 yards away and this thing up at the battlefield. That is going to be probably, you know, something that they're going to want to eliminate. So that could be an issue. So with that, normally you have that at night and hand and arm signals during the day. Of course, they degrade at night because you can't see as well. If you don't have night vision, it's going to be more difficult to see. So you can use certain hand and arm signals. You can literally Google hand and arm signals and there's like a whole poster board that you can learn and your group can learn or you can come up with your own. Something simple like, you know, in the military, hurry up, rally up, head count, you know, all those things are pre-laid out. But to add another layer of psyops or deception, everyone knows those because they can look them up on Google, make up your own and make them a standard operating procedure for your neighborhood protection plan. So when I do this, it doesn't mean rally up. It could mean something completely different. Hey, we're sending reinforcements on this location. Perfect. That is a solid way you can use. So like I said, lights at night, hand and arm signals normally during the day. Moving down into sound. Now I get it, sound and verbal are kind of the same things, but in this application, it's not. Sound, mainly whistles. I have a couple here that I've used and still use to this day, being active duty military, this whistle is literally on my gear. Mainly because we have certain you know, sounds or blasts that we can use to communicate when our radios go down. So, whistles and sound from instruments have been used for hundreds and thousands of years to relay something. I normally always keep these, honestly, on my plate carrier, and you can do three blasts mean this, one blast means that, one long blast means this particular thing, and you can get in that and kind of make it with your own group. So, back in the Civil War, they used to use drums, trumpets, Hey, if you hear a char, like a certain melody, hey, that means charge. Hey, that means retreat. Those are simple communication tactics taught to troops so that they can effectively maneuver on the battlefield. And that is exactly what we're doing, but we're literally giving all of y'all for super cheap the capability to do that. Because if communication degrades over, you know, say a firefight or something like that, it is very bad. That's when things start going bad. Yes, you could have the best shooter in the world, but if you can't communicate with your other troops, you're going to get outflanked and you're probably going to get destroyed. Anyway, it's kind of going on a tangent there. So let's progress in to other things. Whistle, a bell, horn, or alarm. A bell. Everybody kind of knows like the joke or even utilized properly. On a farm, if you ring a, a bell, it normally means, hey, food is ready. Why don't you transfer that into the center of your neighborhood and in the middle of the night, if you hear this massive bell ringing, hey, that means get up out of bed, put your gear on because we need to get to work and start defending our family's lives because maybe a riot or an opposition is coming towards us. Everybody in the entire neighborhood will know what that bell means and go, oh crap, it's going down, let's get ready. Same with horns and alarms. So when you set up an entry control point, at a say an avenue of approach at your neighborhood we're going to get in and discuss this later on as well in another video but if you have a car parked there and it's a blocking force so other vehicles can't come in if you hit the car horn maybe three or four times that can let other people in the neighborhood hey i need help someone's trying to come in simple communication like that can make or break the defense or even maybe the lives of your family if you're defending on them or defending them and relay or relying on other people around you. So really quick, normally, let's just say this is your you know, neighborhood right here, and this the red line is like a road or a avenue of approach. Normally, how to secure a proper neighborhood verbally or communication-wise, you will set people out further, maybe half a mile, a couple hundred meters, you know, whatever distance into what we call an LPOP or a listening post observation post. Their whole job is while they stay there camouflaged, they're observing the main avenue of approach or something else and they will relay information 
back to your neighborhood to give you kind of a quick edge. So a mile out, if they see a large opposition moving down this road, they can communicate effectively from their position back to the group and say, hey, get ready. That gives your neighborhood literally maybe five, 10 minutes of extra time to get ready, get in place, and effectively defend having the like kind of one up or the leg up, you know, in the instance, ready for this to happen. So that is just one example. Later on, we're getting to get into LPOPs, internal security response, external security response, um, CCPs or command posts. We're going to get into all that in other videos. This is just kind of down and dirty. So we discussed about other methods already. Let's talk about radios. First off, there are CB, HAM, FRS, GMRS. There's different stuff on there. So CB and FRS, GMRS radios, you don't really need a license to operate. You can just use them. Civilian band. Now, they are limited because you are limited to channels, just like the little walkie-talkies we all used to use, maybe as kids and even hunting. A lot of hunters and stuff will utilize them. And they go between channel one, channel one, and you just talk, you know, maybe a mile or two. They work, but they're not really programmable. When ham and VHF, UHF come into play, they are. Granted, ham, you need a license to operate it. So first off, all my ham users that are observing this right now, I understand that you need a license in a time of law. This is a hypothetical scenario. What we're going over is a time without law being effective. There's no law enforcement. There's no military. There's no, no one to call to help you. If you are actively engaging your weapon system against an opposition, possibly killing people, I would say killing people and an FCC issue of using a ham radio while you're not supposed to because you don't have a license is going to be very far down on the priority list in this hypothetical scenario without rule of law. Let's get that out of the way. I know the ham users are going to just destroy the comments here in a second. So we'll just push through it, whatever you want to say. So I employ Baofeng radios. These are very cheap alternative. Yes, I am not a communication specialist, as in like proper dialing in radios, but I do know these work very well in very close intermittent areas. You can use this or purchase these for about $25, $30. Now, there are better things on the market. You can go up to $100 a radio, but for how simple these are, they are very effective. Now, you can route these comms into other things. For, in, for instance, I have mine set up through Peltors. I can hear through my Peltors or my um, hearing protection what communications is going on. It's a little bit expensive. It is possible. I have a separate video up on how to do the NATO connections between the Peltor, push to talk, and everything like that. Definitely possible. Another alternative, if you still want hearing protection, you can use the little earbuds, the ones that go inside, and connect into the radio, and then you can put your ear pro over top of them so you can still have proper communication. You can talk into these radios, and you won't have any issues. So I have mine routed through, and I can literally give these out to the rest of my neighborhood. Hey, here's radio, here's radio, and now we can effectively communicate. So issues with radios too is electricity. How do you get around that? Because, sorry about that, I didn't mean the, the mic. Um, how do you get around that? So a smart opposition, in my opinion, would cut the power to your neighborhood and now you don't have any power. Now granted, if they're charging up front, you shouldn't have an issue, but the long-term aspect of not having electricity, how do you charge these without, I mean, you wanna use these because you spend some money on them. Options, you can get like a battery bank. Real quick, option to still charge stuff, literally with extra solar panels. So, even if your power goes out in your neighborhood, you can still communicate effectively with your force. Doesn't matter if they cut the power. Will it be much more of a burden or hindrance? Absolutely. Another op option is, is getting the battery packs that take double A's, especially the rechargeable ones. Because you can recharge these with this or even go direct. Or if you just have normal double A's laying around, 
you can still communicate by putting this battery pack with double A's into these. Now, how long will that last? That's how much batteries do you stock up pretty much. But it is a capability that you can continue if you're using a battery pack or a solar powered based implement to keep these radios in continual use even if you don't have electricity. So I know I discussed a lot of stuff in this. I tried to give kind of the down and dirty options and that was my intent. If you guys viewed this and think that I gave you some kind of value in this, please hit like, give me a comment. I know all the ham licensor, or licensees and all the people that use this are gonna be exploding in the comments and whatnot, and I get that, so I'm just ready for it. Um, but we are gonna be discussing a lot more on you know specific terms, how to set up a plan. We are gonna be transitioning away from the Minuteman kit after it's done and progressing to a defensive force or defending your neighborhood series. Everything about it. We're talking from the inner perimeter all the way out to getting other communities involved. We're gonna go through all that. So if you guys like this kind of stuff and wanna see more, definitely hit like, subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. Definitely think about Patreon. Patreon is doing actually really well. I'm really surprised. All that money goes right back in to this kind of stuff and all the other things that I do on my channel. So I'd appreciate it, and I hope y'all have a great day.